Hello and welcome back to another game review. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look at Cyber Knights Flashpoint, an anticipated currently in early access alpha game where the indie developers have asked me to essentially review the game in exchange of a game copy. The game itself sees itself as a cyber heist tactical shooter uh, so there are a lot of things that the game is trying to do. We're going to explore is the game living up to all of uh, those anticipations or is there something that can be improved. I'm reviewing it based on the current state of the game which is alpha so uh, there will be a couple of howevers and uh, there might be quite a bit of changes until the actual game releases but based on what I've seen here is my review. For full disclosure before we're jumping into any review I am not like other game reviewers I am going back to the roots of game reviewing where not everything was getting a 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10. Games uh, that I'm reviewing are going to need to hold up against other A, AA and AAA titles. I will put into context that smaller studios of course don't have the means to get those graphics going and that's totally fine. However, the game itself needs to stand up against other games. And that means that an average game will be a 5 to 6, a good game will be a 7, a great game will be an 8, a game of the year type of game will be a 9, and a truly exceptional genre defining game will be a 10 out of 10. So the bar is relatively high and there will be a normal distribution. I'm saying that in advance to uh, preface any expectations. A game that is okay or good, kind of 5 to 7 out of 10, is not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. So without further ado, let's jump right into the review. All right, so jumping into the first category, which is lore and background, I will say that I'll be a bit kind in this review because I want to use the good faith of uh, the developers that have given me uh, this game in order to review and not necessarily dunk on it, but rather provide ideas of how to improve certain things. So whenever something is substandard, I will come up with ideas of how to do it better, but also explain what is currently missing from my point of view. So, with lore and background, I think that the game has potential. There are nuggets here and there, and it might be due to it being early alpha or middle alpha that there isn't more yet. But the point that I'm trying to make is there are definitely a couple of factions that the developers have thought about. Uh, you can see that whenever you're looking through background stories of characters, uh, there are NPCs and contexts that you know, almost like in the Shadowrun environment where you do have very much a fixer uh, or Johnson that is giving you uh, new missions. However, all of that comes out of nowhere. It comes without any context. There is no kind of lore de uh, defining journal that'll give you a few more hints of who is who and why are things happening there is no world map there is effectively nothing of that like and I do understand that of course when you're designing a game those things are coming relatively late in the process because you want your core gameplay loop first and foremost to stand the test of time but I would caution the developers of basically assuming that everybody is just taking things for face value and has a suspension of disbelief. Sometimes with very simple mechanics like introducing in a dialogue why a certain character from a certain faction does something and hinting or dropping hints that a faction um, is known to do X, Y and Z, that is incredibly helpful. Or use something like in um, Pathfinder Kingmaker where you are slow but surely building up a journal so that the character is getting to know the uh, landscape. The absence of a world map, even if it is an incredibly simplistic one, um, a good example of how that could be done efficiently is Chimera uh, Squad, where you 
do have a base map and you're always knowing generally what goes on different uh, areas of the city have different problems etc etc none of that is currently present and i think there is a huge miss because uh, the game seems to revolve around you building up your little swat of cyber knights that are doing more and more missions are therefore becoming more renowned in the underworld and are going to get beef with other factions however that only becomes meaningful all of the little characters in the game only become meaningful if you know what their interaction with the rest of the world is so room for improvement there but there are concrete ways of how that can be done better which brings us nicely to the graphics and the graphics is a mixed bag in cyber knights flashpoint i will say that there is a certain love for a uh, style i really appreciated uh, the very uh, cyberish uh, and punk neo-punk style that a shadowrun universe would bring and they have nailed that with a few assets they that they have included i think the character modeling and uh, even the level of um, customization is great. It won't rival a AAA title like XCOM 2 in their customization, but it still does a good job in doing that. However, there are also a couple of things that can be improved, such as the amount of just digital items that are currently in the game. Again, it can be a problem of early alpha, but all of the weapons are merely looking alike. There is very little difference that you can tell. The items, the skills, they all look very clunky, hard to read. Uh, the graphical user interface is not optimized by any stretch of the imagination. Um, if the um, producers would use uh, an example of a custom mod for XCOM 2, where there is a color coding for how many um, actions a certain um, ability takes, that I think would be a great way forward. When we are looking at the game, uh, the current assets are already making for an enjoyable experience. However, in order to truly stand the test of time and be competitive in the gaming market, I don't think that the current uh, graphics are enough. What I'm seeing reminds me very much of a Shadowrun-esque uh, game um, feel, but Shadowrun with a gritted uh, environment was just a little bit cleaner and I'm not saying that the Shadowrun games were known for their superior graphics plus they came out around seven to ten years ago so there is a lot uh, that needs to be done and refined but again in the process of game development we're still in uh, the early cycle where things are not polished if I could give a couple of hinters in terms of what needs to be done better besides readability uh, tool tips and just cleanness of uh, the graphic user interface. I am seeing elements of Valorant and other shooters in here where uh, the gridless environment uh, is having a lot of round uh, circles and squares for certain abilities, but all of that does not necessarily feel super intuitive or natural it feels a little bit uh, neon like uh, put on a, a grid and very gamey if that's what you're trying to aim for in terms of uh, the look and feel then that is fine i think the better user reception at least from my point uh, would be to get a little bit more into the realism um, add a few shadows here and there and make sure that not everything is totally um, circular, round, and uh, balanced. The last thing around uh, graphics that I would uh, point out is it is very difficult to make a meaningful graphical user interface that is crisp and self-explanatory. And I think the team of uh, Cyber Knights Flashpoint needs to work more on getting the crispness, the clarity on the graphical user interface done. A lot of elements are to be seen, but if you are looking for a great example of a simplified, really easy to understand user interface, Battletech is potentially one of uh, the benchmarks of how to do it. Very little on the screen, but all the important information is there very much opposed to what you're currently seeing up in the game Cyber Knights. That doesn't mean that there is no hope uh, that can still be improved, but there are definitely a couple of uh, things that need to be worked on.
Which nicely brings us to sounds and FX. Uh, the reason why I gave it an average is because there isn't just that much to uh, get through at the moment. A lot of uh, the FX um, samples that I've heard, gunshots, grenade explosions, and so on and so forth, were relatively f good. Uh, I wouldn't say they were outstanding, but they were on point and they really fed into that cyber environment. Uh, where there is music in the few it, uh, scenes, it is on point and not bad. It's not that uh, the designers have hired their own um, kind of orchestra and are now trying to win a prize for best game music, but that is potentially one of the lower priorities and can be done later in the game. What I would say is one of uh, the improvement potentials that are currently uh, that is currently not included is the lack of voice acting. And with a good AI software, you would be able to read the lines of dialogue and therefore get a better look and feel for kind of a gritty cyberish world. Uh, goes nicely together with the lore points that I made at the beginning, but there is room for improvement specifically in red dialogues, better and more fitting music at different points in the game, and just a wider spectrum of uh, sound effects overall. Nothing um, to be concerned at the moment about. I would not not buy the game just because of the horrendous sounds. Which brings us to the main category of this review, which is the core gameplay and game mechanic. And there are a couple of points to go through. I will uh, shortly evaluate why I think that there is a lot of room for improvement at the moment on this part in particular. So as always, let's categorize it in the macro perspective. What does that game want to be? This game wants to be a lot. And I think the team is currently caught up in a problem of too much. Uh, to do and too little time to go through all of this. The game in a nutshell is a turn-based game that has an initiative system like Chimera Squad. It works on a gridless system. It is trying to have stealth elements of squad-based stealth. It is trying to have round-based combat. It is trying to have RPG-esque elements uh, from including multiple factions and playing off of uh, each other. And it tries to have some sort of, well, procedurally generated uh, missions as far as I have understood it. On top of that, the game tries to create kind of interactions and a few cute mechanics like tally. So the, the more um, you are doing in the underworld, the more the game is um, uh, trying to... Uh, create resistance because the other factions are starting to catch up to you. On top of it, it uh, does have a skill uh, system like Path of Exile with kind of a zero grid where you can uh, start to go into different skill uh, trees with even sub skills for each of them. If all of that sounds surprisingly complex and a bit over the top, then that is exactly where the game currently is at. And it risks uh, to be a jack of all trades, master of none. And the, the problem with that is just because you have a lot of cool and neat ingredients, it doesn't necessarily mean that all of them thrown together into one pot make for a great stew. Sometimes you need to decide what you want to be and what you not want to be. And I think that Cyber Knights hasn't done that decision yet. What I would recommend to the team is a much clearer thought process of what they want to get out of the game at the end of the day and what the experience is. And if the answer is all of the above that I mentioned, then they potentially need to spend a lot more time into developing uh, the game. And even then, I'm not sure if the end product will receive praise from the customer. I'll give you a couple of um, reasons why I think that some of the game mechanics at the moment are actually working against each other. So for starters, if you do have a heist game, which is very much timing based, and you combine that with a round uh, system, and you do have larger teams like three or four, then per definition, whenever you're quote unquote sneaking in the game, uh, you will need to run through many, many, many turns. Other games have simply done that better, such as Alien uh, Descent 
or such as um, uh, the Eden uh, games or such as other games that are focusing on real-time stealth gameplay where essentially as long as you're in, uh, the in the stealth part the game runs at a normal speed and then you're at some point going to go into a round-based game. With uh, Cyber Knight's Flashpoint it is the opposite. I found myself in the stealth gameplay um, to to oftentimes ask myself why would I go through many many iterations of stealth um, loop in order to bypass enemies when I simply can kill them. The quote unquote punishment for killing enemies is that your tally goes up as in the enemy security uh, system will be better and more enemies will spawn but since uh, the AI is atrocious at the moment and just doesn't do a good job in any form of combat uh, it was never a problem to just go in guns blazing I appreciate that there can be multiple game uh, play approaches but I don't think that uh, the stealth gameplay end the round um, play is particularly well um, meshing up with each uh, with each other. There are other ideas of how to solve that problem. If you go look into um, into cyberpunk, uh, that is a first person shooter where you do have elements of world uh, building and stealth in there and you can play it very much in a stealth fashion and the game is excellent in showcasing how you can hack the environment and get benefits out of it. Cyber Knight unfortunately falls flat on that uh, regard. Oftentimes I found myself clicking through the rounds and then getting impatient at some point because it was becoming a chore more than anything else. The second thing that I would say is sometimes there is too much um, of something. Depending on what kind of users or gamers you want to um, appeal with your product, you might need to think about how de deep do you want to go into the strategy. Currently there is little explanation so I can't really talk about how things are developing, but the Sphero Grid itself looks overly complex at the moment very uh, cumbersome you're getting a lot of abilities and all of them do something but are not necessarily balanced now you could argue you know what that will balance out over time but my point is something else I am very critical about games that use complexity for the sake of complexity just put out a lot of content and then 80% of the content is basically meaningless because it doesn't really serve any purpose. Without going too deep into the individual trees, I could already spot out quite a few prime abilities that I think will be substantially stronger than other abilities, therefore asking myself the question, why do you even need to skill? I think XCOM has done a very nice job in its original form of dumbing down skill trees. And if you want a little bit more than the long war mods of XCOM showcase, just how you can make meaningful decisions with force movement. A zero grid in a game like that with uh, even more talents that you can um, get over time looks a bit grindy um, at best, but not necessarily like a character development that I would enjoy going uh, through. And I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that combined with a stealth game, combined with a bit of a tactical game, combined with a semi RPG is sort of pushing the envelope quite a bit. I think the best way forward for Flashpoint uh, would be to select one or two of these uh, things that they want to excel in, go deeper into that spectrum, fully commit to it, and then get rid and really trim down the rest of it. Um, if you want to be a round-based combat, focus on that, do that very, very well. Uh, maybe combine it with a nice little lore system behind it, um, get a couple of uh, good procedurally generated missions and a sub couple of storyline missions in between. And I think you do have a very robust, great um, uh, um, frame for a good game. Or alternatively, make it a stealth game, make it real time, get rid of all of the skill trees, but really focus uh, or uh, do the sk skill trees uh, exclusively around stealthing and improving stealth and focus much more on consumables, cooldown timers and other stuff. That would be an equally good, um, albeit completely different game. So if you focus more with what you're doing, I think the overall product will gain a lot. 
All right, let's take a look at replayability. The current game offers missions that can be approached from different angles. However, I think that is going to fall too flat if you just look at continuous replayability. The game needs some sort of aspect, something that is greater than just playing through the missions. I always felt a, a sign of relief when all of my agents came out of the missions, but in order to make it more meaningful, I think lore um, a better base environment, more differences in the st in the skills, and not just kind of variants of the same character class. All of that would really make up for a great experience if you're replaying it. Sometimes less is more as well. I think games like Lamplighters League had a neat approach to replayability, where you just had limited agents, and at some point you needed to decide who do you want uh, to pick. And with so much um, flexibility, there was always uh, the next run where you're just going to run a different setup. So I think that wasn't uh, too bad and would make a single player game generally more replayable. So how is um, Cyber Knight's Flashpoint tying out overall at the moment? Which neatly brings us to the totaling of the score. I have seen a few reviews on Steam and there is a lot of anticipation at the moment. The game is at 4 out of 5 uh, stars on uh, Steam. So that's sort of the equivalent out for an 8 out of 10 game. I couldn't get as enthusiastic and excited about the current version yet. And that uh, might be just my different approach to game review compared to uh, the modern, uh, very inflated review of games. But not everything is an 8 out of 10. And here's the good part about it. I think that Cyber Knight's Flashpoint has a lot of potential. The p uh, parts of the game that I played were enjoyable. I found myself in a couple of shootouts and I got the hang of it. Threw, uh, threw a grenade here, shot here, did a bit of overwatch there. Um, granted, the AI at the moment is absolutely atrocious, so there isn't much that you can get out of it from a really tactical uh, standpoint. And I think that needs way more development capability. Um, but that the good news there is that it is, in my opinion, a diamond uh, in the rough. I think that the game can be more than it currently is. The team, however, needs to put uh, on a couple of decisions that might not always be easy. You can't please everyone. In my humble opinion, if this game uh, is uh, going to be successful, then it requires from a lore and background part, definitely a bit more writing, a way more nuanced way of placing information in the hands of uh, the player, and it needs to decide what it wants to be. Is it a Shadowrun clone, then get the IP and do something with it? Is it um, a cyberpunk um, clone? Then maybe try to get that IP and do something with it. Is it its own IP? Then you need to invest way more in world building. Graphics and GUI need rework. Specifically, the GUI is not up to par for a tactical game or a game that wants to be tactical. Specifically, the description, the clarity. Sometimes uh, the description of something is just too long and ambiguous, not really uh, well understandable. Sound on FX is okay at the moment, but my core criticism or request for the team would be to really think about how they want to streamline the gameplay. Streamline is the name of the game here. The game has too many features, tries to be too much at the same uh, time, and therefore misses the mark on all of the subcategories. It's a typical Jack of all trades, master of none uh, dilemma that the team finds itself in. And that's really a shame because I can see that this game is being developed with a passion. Uh, the reason why there are factions and why there are uh, all of those cool little and neat things is because someone in the team came up uh, with, at a team meeting, I imagine, and said, you know what, that would be a great idea. Why wouldn't we uh, do that? And whilst I do agree that certain ideas are great, my point is get your core basic ideas absolutely straight and get rid of distractions. And always ask yourself, is the core gameplay loop 
uh, one that is enjoyable and that people will spend time on. I can tell you at least out of my experience, if you're going through a round-based system that is trying to uh, have a, a squat sneak uh, uh, system or squat roguelike system, this is not going to be enjoyable for the long period of time, at least not for me. Others might see it uh, differently. All right, that brings us to the end of today's review. That was uh, Cyber Knight's Flashpoint. I hope uh, you got information out of it. I would cautiously say observe the game and uh, see how it develops, but it can definitely be a diamond. I hope that the team gives me the faith of uh, letting me review the final product once it is out there. And as always, let me know in the comments down below, uh, did I nail it or did I miss anything? See you in the next game review. Bye bye.